Yeah, how's it going? So, I've just about finished version 2 here of the solar water heating system. Um, the system, the intention is to heat water that circulates through. Um, I tested at the end of last winter with only one compost pile and I had some success. Um, but there was an issue. So the issue was with the original pile is with there being only one compost pile um, over time the temperature of that pile trended downwards more than upwards. The reason for that was on a cloudy day, which there's more cloudy days than there is sunny days, the only source of heat for the water circulating through this whole system was the compost pile. So the system was continually sucking all the heat out of the compost pile and the compost was not on cloudy days is not able to keep up with the losses so the temperature trends down so I was getting between about 20 a range of between about 20 degrees to 35 degrees Celsius in the pile but generally it trended down most of the time so when I switched the system off I noticed the temperature goes straight back up in the compost pile and it just continually heats up as you can see in this graph here so that made me think if I have two piles and I alternate between those piles, when the pile is switched off one pile can gain back its temperature and add temperature while the other pile is working and then that pile can have a break and, and regain its temperature while it has a break and the other pile can do the work releasing its heat. So if it's a sunny day the pile was able to heat because of the, the boost from the solar was able to, the pile was, allowed, was able to keep up with the heat losses and gain heat but overall there was more cloudy days and sunny days at night time of course the only source of heating for the water at night is the compost pile um, and the water stored in the storage tank obviously but mostly the compost pile so what I've done is I've got two piles now and the intention is as I said to give each pile a break so the way this system works is back at the greenhouse there is a circulation pump that pump pumps the water around through a series of insulated pipes over through let's just say this compost pile first while the other one's having a break it's going to go through this compost pile it's going to absorb heat out of that compost it's then going to come out and it's going to go if it's a sunny day up into the compost water heater here um, and then it's going to go back to the greenhouse circulating through the beds releasing heat and into the storage tank releasing its heat into the water in the storage tank it's then going to come back around let's say it goes cloudy it's going to go through the compost heap it's going to take its heat from that compost pile it's not going to be able to go into the solar heater because it's cloudy so it's going to skip that it's going to go back to the greenhouse etc etc in this situation the compost will drop slightly um, but the next day it will switch over and this this pile would have gained a lot of heat and it will it will be able to the system will then be able to take its heat from this pile while the other one has a break and warms back up so by doing this I'm, I should be able to get higher temperatures overall in these compost heaps and hopefully trend up I would say it would trend up but we'll see so it won't be until March April when I get the system going that's sort of the mid autumn um, yeah so let's just go and have a look over here at what I've done so I did a little bit of exposed aggregate on there out of an experiment turned out okay it was a little bit rough on this one the first bit but I sort of fig figured out how to do it on the second bit it's going to be covered in compost anyway just a side experiment so here's the uh, coils I haven't done the valves or anything yet there'll be valves on this and connectors um, there'll be a fan which I'll talk about in a second um, so I've used slightly thicker irrigation pipe on this um, the reason being when the when the compost sinks around the pipe I don't want it to crease the pipe um, and I've secured it nicely to a frame this time so that the pipes don't sink with soil they stay they stay where they are and the soil sinks around them so uh, these are fully insulated as you'll see with polystyrene then there's a bit of plastic and then to protect the polystyrene and then there is a bit of mesh to protect the plastic on top um, I've made a raised foundation for it to stop the roots coming in I've still got to put the hardwood sleepers on the fronts of the compost pile it's got a roof on it um, yeah and it'll have, it's also got I'm also going to aerate the pile by pumping air in intermittently by a timer so what I've got is I've got, there'll be a fan connected to this pipe and then in each pile I've managed to make use of the aluminium fence again because it's got lots of little holes underneath it 
so air will be pumped through those holes into the pile intermittently uh, aerating the pile it'll have a lid on this pile too uh, possibly I'll insulate that lid I have some polystyrene left over um, yeah so that's pretty much it so in this video I'll run through quickly uh, sort of how it's constructed so yeah cheers all right so I've got my whole my old compost heap stripped out now um, first thing I'm going to do is I had a bit of a problem last time with roots coming into the bottom of the compost heap through the gaps in the concrete, uh, the, the bricks. So what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to put a layer of concrete right across the bottom of it. Alright, so the foundations are in. I had some old spare polystyrene and some old bricks that I didn't need, so I've packed that in there to build the ground up a bit. And I'll just pour the concrete straight over the top. Alright, I had a go at doing a bit of DIY exposed aggregate and actually it came up not too bad. Um, just a little bit of slight different coloration in the concrete. Probably because I had a little bit too much cream on top of that. But, hmm, interesting. Yeah, so I've got the roof done, the walls done, and the foundation done. I'm just going to insulate the walls now. Polystyrene is now on. And I'll put an extra layer of plastic on top of that just to keep it protected. A bit of this tough sort of plastic here, and then I'll put a bit of mesh on top of that. So uh, I'll go ahead and do that now. It is now all complete. So I've got insulated lids. I've got the sides on. There's another lid on this one. I when I get back from holiday, I'll put the valves on and connect everything up.